Hello, everyone. It's us. We're here once again. Hello. Look at our look at our little avatars there on the screen. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Just chatting away. I, I feel like. Hold on. I need to move us there. There we go. That's oh. like because now I'm facing towards you, so but it makes more it makes more. We've sense. never done this before. Everything's broken I know. Now. Look at us, fucking rock stars you that we are. Crazy things up. Everything. Continuity of fifty years or something. <laughs> 63 years at this point, Muller. Yeah, it's been just time <laughs> travels, man. I don't know. That's it. That's the atmosphere on open bar, though. 63 years of tradition out the window at a stroke. We're just doing whatever we want. So, yeah, pretty cool. I, I've, I've possessed your body temporarily and you're you're stuck with mine. So, you know, I hope you like liver cirrhosis. Oh, it's that Freaky Friday sort of situation, huh? Yeah, yeah. Have fun with it. You know, I tend to treat mine as an adventure playground. <laughs> By the time we return, I'm like, ah, oh, that was fun. I had some drinks and messed people a lot. And you're just like, what the fuck was that? Like, it was <laughs> a different dimension. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking there about, um, I don't know if you ever remember from Red Dwarf, like, Rimmer gets an opportunity to, like, possess Lister's body. And he does it on the pretext that, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be, like, super disciplined. I'm going to get you in shape for, like, a couple of weeks. Um, and, and like as soon as he takes control of it, he like just throws himself into a trough full of food, and <laughs> he just absolutely <laughs> pigs out. <laughs> I have not seen Red Dwarf yet. It's one of my sins. Oh God, man! I think you actually should just leave now and just go watch it. Fine. See you later. Um, I, I yeah, I think you'd like it. Um, I British believe I comedy, would. two guys in a room kind of style, especially the first few seasons. Um, yeah, you know what we could do one time? We just do a couple of episodes watch through. Like I would watch them with you, just see your reaction. Yeah, all right, I'd be up for that. Uh, anyway, well, we're 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 going off course here. We should do the super chats because that's what people are here for. You're not here to listen yeah. to our pointless waffle. Um. Okay. Well, anyway, we've got them here and they're ready to go. So this is the extended super chats from Open Bar number sixty three, and I'll just dive right in. Uh, James Crawford says. Message Reaper on uh, Liverpool. The entire city was founded by King John to scam the nobles to make a navy to invade the Irish. Make me proud to come from a family of scousers. What? Are you telling me that the whole city of Liverpool is just a giant con? Wow. That sounds awful. But, uh, oh well, fair play. Um, I'm sorry Reaper's not here to answer that one. I can't believe yeah. I, I had a moment, right, where I wasn't sure if he was from Liverpool or Manchester. Manchester, <laughs> I sometimes struggle to tell the accents apart. Sorry, man. Shoot me. Um, Isaac says, Drinker, will you review the 15-minute fan animation Astartes by Sayama Pan Peterson? It got him hired by the actual company, a one-man creation. Damn, that's impressive. So it's just a 15-minute fan film. I'll yeah, they are. Um, they're pretty amazing. Um, even for, I, I know nothing about the subject matter, and yet I thought they were pretty damn cool. It's a uh, it's a great universe to to base stories in, and mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just I'm so surprised that they haven't done more with it on a film on the sort of film TV front. It's ripe for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, Henry Cavill's going to be doing something. Um, I guess we'll see what comes of it. But yeah, I'll take a look at that. I don't know if I can do a whole review on it because it's only 15 minutes, but I'll take a look. Um, Mark of Reality says America, Britain's first rebellious teenager. Yeah. I know. You know they're they're they've gone a bit wayward at times, but you know we just get to sit back with our arms folded and say they'll learn. Yeah, it's up to them. It's, you know, take responsibility for their choices. Now we're out of the yeah. picture. <laughs> we're not angry. We're just disappointed, America. <laughs> uh, Norwegian Kryptonian says purple burglar alarm. Is that supposed to be some Scottish thing that I can't say? Well, I just did, and I'm nailed it in your He's face. Broken all of the rules. Woo. Uh, Melvin Deeply says, I'm cheap, get over it. Aren't we all, Melvin? <laughs> Aren't we all? Uh, Droner says, check out my lightsaber review of Ahsoka. Shad, you'll appreciate it. Okay, there you go. Mm. Um, I was inspired, actually, by our chat the other day, and I made a video about what a lightsaber would actually do to a human body if it was shoved inside you. Um, yeah. I was like, I need, to, I need to do some research on this one and apply the power of science to it. And it sounds absolutely horrific what would actually happen to you. Yeah, just explode, essentially. Kind of, yeah. It was, it, you know, the hydrogen atoms inside your body would just combust with the sheer heat. And uh, it would just be a chain reaction. You would just burn internally uh, right in front of the person. Um, it would be an owie. 
It would be, yeah. You definitely wouldn't walk it off. Uh, I'm pretty sure no. you, just, you wouldn't be up and about doing things the next day, that's for sure. Um, Porch Bandit Media says, if Scotland is like East Coast Canada, driving straight means you are drunk because you're not avoiding potholes. That's probably true, yeah. Um, although, weirdly, when I was in I was in Toronto for Rogue Elements getting filmed, and that was <laughs> the roads as far as they went were really good. Um, there was no potholes of any kind. It was just smooth running. Um, yeah, pretty much just driving through forests most of the time. We were out in the middle of nowhere, but it was good. Um, Dragonic Ice Mage says, "Hey all, I'd like to suggest some symphonic metal bands I saw two weeks ago: Battle Beast, uh, Zandria, and Camelot." Shad for Dragon's Dogma, what was your favorite class? Mine was Strider. I really can't wait for the second one. Uh, sorry, Shad can't answer that, but I don't know. Ma, are you like your symphonic metal? Have you heard of any of these bands? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's the thing with, with metal. I mean, I say this just everything. There's like a million bands. Uh, trying to hit all of the more well-known and famous ones first. Um, but even then, I miss a whole bunch of them. Like Blind Guardian was when I was turned on semi-recently. What oh, was your favorite symphonic metal band? Because I'm sure you mentioned it the other night. Yeah, uh, it's it's close these days. There's probably still Rhapsody of Fire, but Power Wolf is is right behind it. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a note of that, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna go listen to some of their stuff after oh. this. Not while I'm doing it, because they'll start screaming at people. But I'll uh, if you do get to it, I'll recommend an album from both of them to start with, sort of thing. All right. So take it. They date back to the '90s then. Uh, so Rest of Fire, yeah, they've they've gone through a shit ton of band changes, like swapping out all kinds of uh, members, but still, even their newest album I uh, really liked. Nice. And Power Wolf are just, um, I think they started out as a parody band, and now they're like one of the most popular metal symphonic, like straight up just taking it, so so to speak, seriously. Um, That's interesting. So they're like parody, but they were actually just good generally, and people were like, yeah, just do it, do it um, for real. Yeah, I fucking love the well. I love the singers on both of those bands, but um, that's a, that's the difference, right? Like, you know, a lot of people like the way that they use the instruments, or the singer, or both, or um, the subject matter. Like, a lot of people like Sabaton just because of the coverage of history and stuff. Yeah, alone, but um, yeah, there's loads to love, loads of stuff out there. Nice. Uh, Code Warrior says, "Where's El Critical? <laughs> El Doggo Critical?" Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. The other night he wasn't there. Um, through in the living room, so you know the the doggo goes where the doggo goes, and sometimes he's just not in my office, and there's not much I can do. Um, Coco says, "Bo, what a wonderful surprise! Love his videos." Uh, yeah, that will be history, bro. Um, mm. Yeah, it was good to have him on. He was a good guy. Mister Landa says, "Critical drinker, I love you, man, but my girlfriend brought up a point. She thinks you hate women. You always rag on them. Anyways, love you, man." <laughs> I do not. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you it's, hate women uh, outside of all the ones you either like, love, or think nothing of. Uh, yeah, I mean, like if you look, uh, if you look at my either my drinker recommends or the positive reviews I've given, or all of the um, the extra shot series that I've done, like there is a ton of movies where they either have female. It's either female centric. Um, or you got like a very prominent female character in it, and I praised it because they were well written. Um, yeah, it, it, on that score, I guess my issue is badly written female characters, which unfortunately we seem to have a glut of these days. Um, so you know, I was thinking, um, remember I mentioned it before, you should do a top 10 female characters. I was, yeah, I was they're made it. within the last 10 years or something. Yeah, and then I was thinking. We should, we, you should do like a top 10 male and female. So it doesn't feel like, you know, you wouldn't do the men as well, because that's going to be pretty interesting to know what your top 10 male characters of the past 10 years would be. Hmm. But then I was thinking, oh, it'd be fun for us all to do that, I think. Like, imagine we all did it and then we all posted the same day, sort of thing. Yeah. Kind of compare notes. Yeah. That get as many people as we can in on it, give everybody a, maybe a month to get it done and then release. It'd be fun. Yeah. Oh, I think there's something in that. Yeah, I'd been because like, uh, yeah, I, I don't, um, I don't want to fall into this trap of saying like, well, like we're completely incapable of writing any good characters now, like in any context. Like clearly, you know, it does still happen. It's just a bit more rare, uh, especially with mainstream movies. But um, you know, it's a good opportunity to draw attention maybe to lower profile ones that are still really good. So, uh, yeah, I can pick up a few. Um, 
yeah anyway i'll move on um taker 610 says uh, now that you're back on camera drinker <laughs> which is ironic given that i'm not right now uh can you give us all a zegler double head tilt while saying weird <laughs> <laughs> I can't. My camera is not even powered up right now, um, but I can. I can do the voice. Like weird, weird. Oh god! Just the way she said it almost makes my skin crawl. Yeah, it's um. If you were to sort of condense arrogance into like a persona, uh, it's it's kind of right there. Uh, she's not doing herself any favors. Um. GM says, what really killed me was how the episode was almost a shot-for-shot shot Obi-Wan and Luke Millennium Falcon New Hope remake instead of yeah. any new ground. Pave your own road, writers. Imagine that, yeah. Well, he keeps doing it. Uh, the opening shot was a new hope. The corridors, the shooting, and a spooky big man dressed in black killing everybody is, is a new hope. Obviously the, oh my god, I got one. It's like, oh great. It's like, fuck off. Do something else. Yeah. Because all it does is shine a giant spotlight on how, like, what they've made is inferior to the original in every possible way. Yeah. You know, when I look at them, like, I, and I brought this up uh, on the stream the other night, like, that dogfight scene with the Millennium Falcon, with Luke and Han on the guns, it's really fun. It's really adventurous. Like, you feel excited. You feel the danger. This was so boring and so bland and so just paint by numbers. We just need to replicate the successful formula that was done before. Uh, what a sad way of telling stories. Mm -hmm. um, Maximilian Millerick says, Good day, drinker and crew. First time super chat, long time listener. Love what you do. Could you review Rams from 2020, directed by Jeremy Sims and Mortal Engines, directed by Christian Rivers? So Mortal Engines, <laughs> that's the one with the cities that drive around, isn't it? Yes, the one that I believe that was the biggest loss in Hollywood before The Flash. Yeah. I mean, I, I could, I suppose. Like, Rags could I told me that. that Model Engines is really good for EFAP movies. He's seen it by chance, but none of us have. I, I think you'd have, yeah, you'd have fun with it. Just, what could I even compare it to? Maybe the, <laughs> the Three Musketeers that we watched? Oh, like yeah. That level of ridiculousness. Like, ah, London's chasing us. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how else to describe it. Like, it, I mean, it does what it says on the tin, I suppose. Like, there's giant cities chasing each other around. Um, bizarre but it is what it is i suppose mm -hmm. uh, blaystone says bo dade the amazing history bro on the open bar shut up and take my money jokes aside love all your channels and work and happy to see everyone together thank you and it was yeah it was great to have him on it was a yeah. nice open bar the specter says uh, can you please cast the inevitable woke remake of Father Ted? We all know it's coming and shall herald the end of days as the message closes in to seal our doom. Uh, yeah, imagine making Father Ted now. Um, I would want Jennifer Lawrence to play every role because I think she could. Um, Eli Cash says there's six ships chasing them and they all attack from the same direction and almost on top of each other. Uh, shoot, uh, short ship, Ahsoka sails away into space. The end. I mean, yeah, like the 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 tactics on display in that episode are interesting. They took up so much time too. Everything takes up so much time in Ahsoka because, like, time is is the enemy of this show. I think they they just have to make everything uh, last as long as possible. Yeah. And I think with those first couple of episodes as well, I I fully believe that their philosophy was well you know we can trumpet the number of minutes watched and so if there's literally more minutes in the first episode well all to the good um that'll that'll help our metrics but that, that seems to be all it is because like i can't think of any conceivable reason why that say that um scene with ahsoka on the planet where she's just turning the the ring things to um, solve the puzzle should take like a good five or ten minutes. There's no need for that. No, it's just to eat up time, I guess. Um, Gary's beard crab says at the beginning of Empire, Vader kills a guy for leaving hyperspace too early, leading to them being detected by the rebels on Hoth. True. Yeah. 
which yeah it goes back to the point i think i made um if you really want to approach by stealth wouldn't you want to jump in as close as possible um take whatever scans you need to take and then jump out again before you get attacked because yeah, like if you jump in like really far away and then slowly approach at sub light speed they're going to detect you but they can't detect you in hyperspace um the he did the opposite of what uh, Vader asked him to, and that's why Vader killed him. Um, yeah, which incompetence, right? And and it set a standard forever in movie villains that they are. The logic is, I think, someone would tell you when Vader did it was like it adds to the intimidation because they've got no heroes to kill right now, and so they're willing to kill their own men. Like, look at that, that's fucking terrifying. But of course, it became kind of a joke because it, it sort of climaxed with uh, Kylo Ren strangling one of his uh, men for asking what did Palpatine want in exchange for uh, Rey. Yeah. That was funny as hell. And it's because the writer doesn't actually understand, like, like don't I just show him attacking his own men? Isn't that the intimidation thing? Yeah. I, I think it's so funny when someone takes the wrong lessons from what yeah. the, the, the original was trying to show you about the character. It's just, yeah, you can... The the better the correct interpretation is like this is a man who's so brutally efficient he will literally kill people who fail him as a warning to others and to eliminate them from making further mistakes. Yeah, just get rid of him, promote someone who's gonna be better. And there's so many people in the Empire, I'm sure Vader considers that just basic maths. Like this'll be this'll improve the Empire overall. Yeah. Uh KCW says UK roads sound like uh, Louisiana roads. Cheers, mates. God, I pity the people of Louisiana then. I think you honestly have to experience UK roads properly, like in a in a properly old city that like the roads have been yeah. ripped up and repaired so many times like you can barely even recognize them. So narrow at times to the point where oh, like yeah. nobody's fixed this. You're like you're probably not allowed to legally. Yeah. Uh, Grant says if you had to choose one actor or actress for the rest of your life that you could only watch films that that actor was in, who would it be? Hmm. I think it might, for me, it might be Anya Taylor-Joy. I just really okay. like her. I find her so fucking interesting. <laughs> like, She's right on the brink of looking like oh. a space alien, but like, I, I think she always gives a fascinating performance, and she's just like so, yeah, so compelling on screen. We get access to everything they've made, everything they're going to make, and everything they've made, I assume? Uh, yes. Yeah. So whatever films um, they had been in or were going to be in. I will say, a lot of movies I haven't seen for some of my favorites. You know, if you like locked yourself into Christopher Lee, you'd have like 300 movies to watch. Yeah. M meanwhile, Anya Taylor-Joy, like you might be done after, uh, well, like what, 30 or something? I don't actually know. So it I mean, makes me wonder. There's um, that. Um, I feel you could have a fucking blast just watching all of Steven Seagal's movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as you record it. <laughs> uh, Clint Eastwood would be would be an interesting one. I mean, yeah. god damn, he's been in some good ones. Um, yeah, I think I, I took that more to, like, I, I kind of interpreted that question more as, like, what they were going to be in or, yeah, what they might do moving forward. Makes but, sense. Because yeah. obviously I could grab someone like Anthony Hopkins and watch all the stuff I haven't seen, but also a couple of new ones before he's... It uh, always comes back to Anthony Hopkins for you, it's doesn't a, it? It's, it makes sense, just saying. <laughs> I'm not choosing him just because he looks like an alien. What kind of logic is that? <laughs> <laughs> a hot alien, though. Come on. A hot alien. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best kind. Mm -hmm. uh, Canon Falderall says the absolute state of Star Wars. Great panel, though. Cheers. Thank you. And yeah, it is in an absolute state. Uh, John Goats says, Senator Thrawn, isn't he dead? You sure this isn't personal? Hera, I bet you sit on the fence, you piece of shit. Refuses to show any evidence of any kind. Hera, later. Sorry, guys, no support. Can't imagine why. I made such a great argument. <laughs> <laughs> and then she proceeds to not get involved herself. Yep. Very interesting uh -huh. stuff. I think it's because uh, I'm sure that senator guy is going to get unmasked as an, uh, an empire traitor anyway. But like, yeah, if it, assuming he wasn't, like, and somebody asked me a question like that in the middle of a discussion of that nature, I would just respond with, "How the fuck is that in any way relevant to what you're asking me right now? It doesn't matter yeah. if I was in the war. What matters is like I'm telling you what you're saying makes no sense. Stop." 
Yeah, she was you a clown. That's that's what he had to respond. But, uh, that's what he should have responded with. But like, they obviously didn't want to show how weak her argument was. So instead, he's just like, "No, I wasn't in the war. Sorry." You, could, you don't have to write it that way. You could be like, "She needs, uh, you know, several capital ships and a fleet right now." And they're like, "That's insane. We're not just going to give that to you because you believe something's happening." Uh, send a scout force, and then she argues like scout force is not enough. They'll get blown away, and then they're like, "We don't even know." But what you're talking about is actually happening. We have loads of missions going on, loads of generals asking for resources. We can't just give you a bunch of stuff for nothing. Can you tell us why? And then she says, like, I don't have like definitive proof, but I can get it. I just, you know, and then they're like, okay, so we'll send a scout. And then uh, that can be the scene, you know, like it, it, you can understand. Um, fuck, I've forgotten her name already. Green Lady. <laughs> uh, oh, Hera. Era, yeah, and you can understand a point of view. It makes the council look relatively reasonable. And by the time they get people there, you know the bad guys are gone because that makes sense and it's simple. But no, we have to make her like insane. Yeah, I just think yeah. Imagine how well that scene could have played out if it was written by people who wrote uh, Andor. There would be there would be like smart decisions getting made. There would be compromises. There would be like the the um, jostling of facts and information. And, and what evidence they could pull up that would be that would be good writing a good writer could do with a lot with a scene like that but we don't have good writers we've got dave filoni here oh uh mike oxbig says space whales have been canon in the star wars universe ever since lizzo made her appearance on the mandalorian very true um online fool says ahsoka more like ahsoka who uh true wow Russ Murphy says, people forget that the writers wrote them into that shitty position. They didn't know how to get them out well. I think that's probably the space battle thing. Yeah, but like, a smart writer would know, like, I, I guess they would have a plan for, like, I'm going to put them into this position and I know how I'm going to get them out because I've already planned it way in advance. Um, that's, you know, that's generally how things are done. David Lamplow says, why not have them need to use escape pods, then need to survive on the planet until help arrives. They are forced into a survival situation. That could work. Yeah. Rather than just landing on the planet and just like camouflaging yourself in the trees somehow. Because Or just avoiding all damage for no reason. I mean, yeah, kind of crazy, right? Don't ships have energy signatures and stuff? Like, it doesn't kind of matter if you if you switch your power off. Like, you've still got an active I think they could pick up some core... But no, so, apparently not. Yeah. Uh, Vimorain says, Hail Drinker, awesome panel as always. Sounds like Ahsoka was written by Batwoman writing team with the same crayons on the same walls. I mean, you know, I think Dave Filoni's a step up from the Batwoman writing team. Yeah. You know, he uses proper pencils instead of yeah, yeah. crayons. Um, das Pooch says, The hyperspace tracking ambush stuff gets better. In the EU, uh, the Empire had interdictor cruisers in the books, comics, and games like X-Wing and TIE Fighter that could pull ships out of hyperspace. Wow. That's next level bullshit right there. Mm -hmm. David Lutz says, whales and wolves have common lineage. That's why Filoni is obsessed with whales too. You guys all rock, peace. Okay. Whales and wolves. I sure. Okay. Um, Brent Neindorf says, I uh, would think that the, the globe thing would be as hard to solve as the lamentation configuration from the Hellraiser puzzle box. I mean, you'd, you'd kind of assume that there was a bit more complexity to it, but yeah. I mean, I would like to I would like to see the, the lamentation configuration come out of that, you know, thing that Hera was solving. Um, that would be a nice little introduction to, like, the Star Wars universe. Just bring Hellraiser into it. Um... Kyle Kiernan says, Mauler, what are your top five Mortal Kombat characters? Mine are Kano, Johnny Cage, Raiden, Scorpion, and Quan Chi. Um, this is a really be... specific question to ask you, but okay. Jimac is probably my favorite. Uh, then Noob, Cybot. Uh, Scorpion and Sub-Zero kind of have to have them. They're just so great. And then... Uh, it could be a few, but I'm probably gonna go with Goro. Goro, interesting. It's all, it's all those extra appendages, isn't it? And just appeals. It's pretty to you. cool, yeah. He does. He does look cool. I remember in the original game, just like that. That thing looks terrifying. 
Uh, Ministry of Wrong thinks says it's mind-boggling that Disney thinks it's perfectly normal for people to watch seven or eight episodes of a show and not find out until the penultimate episode what the hell the actual story is. Uh, that's yeah, that's an interesting tactic. Rick O'Neill says, I've read all of the Thrawn books. He's complex, highly intelligent, and a master tactician. These NPCs in Ahsoka are no match for him. Yeah, but... We'll see the, about that. The th Yeah, you'd be surprised how dumb they can make him. Um, yeah, the Thrawn that we're going to get here is not going to be the Thrawn from the books, I suspect. Uh, Graf Webb says, hashtag cancel Disney Plus. I mean, if you insist. Um, Michael Duneef says... I like the training scene. It showed Sabine as flawed, modest, and determined, not a Mary Sue like Ray. Ahsoka, patient and compassionate. The wooden practice swords made sense to me rather than training with lethal weapons. I uh, have to do a hell of a lot more for me than just not have it be super powerful for me to think it's good. I mean, some, some decent fight choreography would be nice to start off with, but... Uh... Is that there's the There's a whole history between these two that we don't even really know about, thanks to how badly the dialogue... like does a job of. I'm not even sure what the robot was trying to achieve with her, what, what results he was gathering. Well, from... I mean, we're literally told like she is the worst Jedi he's ever tried to train. She's got no yeah. aptitude for the Force. And, I, you know, he's he's rightly pointing out you shouldn't even be wasting your time on her. She is not a candidate. Uh, and Ahsoka, well, they have a, a conversation where Ahsoka says, I don't need her to be a Jedi. I just need to be her to be herself. And yeah. I thought, Oh, that's current day writing just thrown in right there. Uh, just be yourself. You're amazing the way you are. Uh, no, it's like you you do need her to be a Jedi. That's exactly what you need right now. You need a Jedi who's equally as skilled and disciplined and capable as you. You don't need this incompetent moron. But apparently not. Um, Stephen Sykes says, Drinker, love your stuff. Please do more of the Drinker fixies. There are loads of options and your versions are always better. Well, I've been toying with the idea of doing the Drinker fixies Barbie. Maybe I could fix that movie and make it real good. I think I've got, I think I've got an idea. Um, X says, everyone has some midichlorians. I guess. Yeah. Maybe they work again. They haven't been mentioned in about 20 years. It's kind of crazy because uh, when people want us to talk about different things that relate to uh, the state of the Force and stuff, it's kind of like, are we does, do people consider the prequel canon or not with the midichlorians thing? Because if you take that into consideration, there's the whole broom boy thing. There's, you know, can everyone have it? But the the person who is least ready to use it is like really just, they can't even notice it, but it would still count as being connected to the Force because everything is the Force. Or just, sometimes you just want to give up. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it doesn't fit. It doesn't gel well with the modern sort of sensibilities of writers that like you have certain chosen people who who can wield the Force, and then everyone else is just kind of screwed. Like they they don't have it, and it doesn't matter how hard they work or try or whatever. Like they they can't do that stuff. I don't think that sits well with them. So. It's mm -hmm. gradually getting reconfigured into like, well, everyone could do it if they just believe hard enough and they believe in themselves or something. I don't know. It just it seems to take the 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 uniqueness and the uh, magic out of it. The more they do this stuff, and yeah, I'm pretty sure Ahsoka just straight up says like, you can, you can, everyone can do it. It's just like they have to they have to find the way to access it somehow. So, sure, yeah, whatever. Uh, Three Beer Thunder says, Writers don't just show how chain of command works if a private has standing orders from a superior that only authorized people can enter a security area. It doesn't matter who it is. If not authorized by a superior, they aren't fucking going in. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess that's how it works. Like, yeah, if you've got orders that says... Um, only certain people can come in here and they're not authorized, then yeah, it makes sense that they can't do it. I think particularly like a private is, is not going to have flexibility in his orders because like it's not his job to interpret them, it's just his job to obey. Uh, Zigar says, as a poll, I'd like to hereby uh, express my deepest apologies for Tomek Baginski and his work on Netflix's The Witcher. 
what did he do? <laughs> Don't know. What did he ruin? Um, I think everyone involved in Netflix is The Witcher should probably just apologize. Um, Peterski says, in all fairness, Filoni's animation is mostly enjoyable, but in animation, we tend to forgive more stupid stuff than in live action. He forgot that. I mean, quite possibly, yeah. Yeah. Cartoon worlds get a lot more uh, forgiveness for things. I just, I, I remember, because like, I never I never watched much of the Clone Wars or Rebels. I, like, like, I would kind of see the occasional episode or whatever. And I just remember the characters being so much more interesting. They were so much more animated. They were so much more vibrant. And they had more personality. It's like it's all just been bleached out of them for this. And I don't know why. Very dull and dry. Uh, quite the opposite of what one would expect. Yeah. Uh, Patriotic Cat says, Disney Star Wars, have hope. We need hope. Hope. Well, you need a new hope, I think. Oh. Um Koenig says, quick shout out to Sound of Freedom. The UK release is tomorrow. Very good. Well, we'll see how it All does right. over here. Uh, Andrew says, funny James Gunn uh, can judge these things about dark films when all his are filled with horrible, unnecessary jokes and never take themselves seriously. I mean, some yeah. scenes do. Most of the films that he makes, though, don't have like a serious tone throughout. The very much playful. Istari Azul says, uh, how do you think things would have been if instead of fire, James Gunn got promoted into Feige's job? Would the MCU cosmic have been any good? I think it would have been a lot better than what we got. Phase 4 yeah. probably would have had a, co a coherent strategy to it. It would be better, but can't say it would be good. Yeah, Don't know. Uh, D. Dinks says, thoughts on the lion in winter with Peter O'Toole and Catherine Hepburn? I'm afraid I have absolutely no thoughts on that because I haven't seen it. I'm sorry. Nor have I. Uh, Play the High Note says, of all the summer movies I saw this year, by far the best was Neil Breen's... <laughs> Neil Breen. Uh, Cade the Tortured Crossing, one of the funniest and uh, best experiences I have ever had in a cinema. <laughs> Is he getting well, good. cinema releases? Should be. We well, <laughs> Honestly, we could do an EFAP movie series on Neil Breen. Um, I mean, that's think, that's one of the planned arcs at some point, yeah. There, that would be epic beyond belief. Tripling <laughs> <laughs> alcohol, uh, though. Oh god, yeah. Um, best enjoyed with massive amounts of drugs and or alcohol. Um, Porch Bandit Media says, in terms of the actual films, the issue with Gun is that a few good movies is not a qualification for running a whole franchise. I agree. Normie76 says, fun question. What media project, movie, or series would you like to see being made if you could choose anything? Um we get this. Question um, and we get a guarantee well, of good quality or is yeah, there some sure. stuff that I just don't want to try unless it's gonna be good. Say so, yeah, it was made by the best people and they, they were just yeah, you know, slavish devotion right. to get it right. I'm hyper invested in a um fully realized like five season thing of Bioshock like Rapture's beginnings Rapture and its heyday and then how it fell apart and then lead all the way up to the game's beginning and maybe even adapt the game nice um, probably for me it would be nice to see finally a good Resident Evil movie um, or failing that maybe Horizon Zero Dawn I, I think there's a lot of like stuff you could pull out of that um, I'd, I'd love to see the war against the machines uh, before the fall, and then yeah, like season two could pick up afterwards uh, with Aloy, and in the in the future, uncovering everything about it. Like yeah, I think there's a lot you could do with that. Um, Tim France says, "Oi, this is the greatest Australian and Scottish crossover since ACDC." <laughs> Slange, have a drink on me. <laughs> Thank you, mate. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Shad in London in a few days. I'm going to be heading down mm. there. Um, Mo Mothman says, let's be honest, Batwoman is the real foundation of DC. Of course she is. Mm -hmm. um, D Jinx says, Warner Brothers needs to go back to what made them a powerhouse studio in the 30s. Great crime drama like Public Enemy, Little Caesar, or swashbuckling fun like The Adventures of Robin Hood. Might be nice. Uh, Timmy04 says, Mahler, what are your thoughts on Logan? Not Logan Air, Logan. Oh, the Wolverine movie. Um... It's interesting because when it came out, I feel like it was universally beloved. But these days, whenever I see it mentioned, a lot of people in chat are like, hmm, and 50 50 on it. I wonder if um, 
just because it doesn't have like a repeatability and it's not a film despite the message i think arguably being positive by the end of course uh, it's not a it's it's a bit of a it's not a fun film i guess i'll put it that way the you have to watch charles xavier with dementia hurting people by accident and trying to deal with how he killed several x-men that's like yeah. his thing and then wolverine is poisoning that's uh, slowly being poisoned to death and he has to kill a clone of himself which costs him his life like it's it's a bit of a dour film it is a deconstruction of wolverine what he means to the world what and of course this is what i would actually as a reference to a uh, mangled attempt with indiana jones he was trying to do the same thing he did with logan at the end of the film we we have a good strong understanding like logan thinks that is there's nothing in the world for him anymore but by the end of the film he's you know lost his life defending a bunch of young mutants and hopefully giving a bunch of spark to the world to carry on sort of thing and so i very much respect the idea i think there's a bunch of like coincidences and it is me writing in there here and there but uh and it's also a little bit misery ish <laughs> yeah. but um i appreciate a lot about it and i'm I was honest, I'm very thankful they were able to make something like that. that that's the absolutely experimental, you know. I, I think um, on the one, definitely on the one hand, it's like this is the R-rated um, Wolverine movie that we were waiting about 20 years to see. Like, I'm just, I'm so annoyed that they didn't finally get it right until like the last movie that he was in, literally. Um, but I'm glad that they at least made it. Uh, I think, yeah going back to the point you made about it's uh, it's a deconstruction of his character and like a deconstruction of the mythos around his character it definitely is but it's a, it shows that it's possible to have a deconstruction that's still respectful to the the character um yeah. and it's not about like mocking him or um trashing his legacy or or you know just showing him as being kind of useless and pathetic compared to like some more like younger and more diverse replacement it's like you know he's he can still absolutely devastate people when he's fired up and goes into his berserker rage like he gets to like go out in an absolute blaze of glory um when it counts but yeah, he's no. a man at the end of his rope and at the end it's of his meta, life and like some meta fun in there too like um the enemy in the end of the thing is this soulless recreated like wolverine that I think is representative, at least to me, I don't know if Mangold was going for this, but it's like, they're the two versions of keeping Wolverine going. They're like, one is a realistic look at what he would be when this far into his life and what the world around him looks like as a result versus this like clean clone thing that has no soul at all. It's just like a, look, it's yeah. Wolverine because he's big, strong and has claws and shouts. And it's like, you have to kill that at the end. Like, I don't know, there's something symbolic about that. I think yeah, there's a lot to chew on there, um, but I think generally the 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 movie did him justice, and yeah, I think when it comes to these like um, explorations of what it means when a, a character is like at the end of their their time and it's uh, it's you know time for them to make their final bow, um, how how is it handled? Is it handled yeah. with a sense of reverence and respect, or is it handled with uh, we're just going to trample on you in order to elevate the new product that's going to replace you? And I think with Logan, I, I it was definitely the former for me, and that's that's how you handle it. It's not it's not all that difficult, uh, and I think this movie managed it. You know, in a way, it almost makes me sad that like, well, he's now coming back and he's playing Logan again for Deadpool three, and mm -hmm. I know it's it's not like in the same continuity necessarily it's just a bit of fun but oh if you've finally done like if you've had a really poignant exit like that do you want to ruin it by saying like this is how people are now going to remember me this was my final appearance as this character i'm not sure and Could be hopefully good. deadpool 3 isn't shit because <laughs> that'll be really awkward yeah but yeah i liked logan overall um H.L. Botrod says Ahsoka will be revealed as Palp as a Palpatine. The Mandalorian chick with too much makeup and fake eyebrows will be a Skywalker. Who knows? Who even cares now? Anything could happen with Star Wars. None of it makes sense. Um, Ozzy ODST says I actually quite like Ahsoka, but I have a feeling it's because it's basically Rebels Season 5 and I really like that show. Shad's a lad. Shad is a lad. And yeah, I mean, I I do get the impression from what people have said that uh, this is just a continuation of Rebels. That's all it really is. Um, Jesus Davila gave us a thumbs up, so thank you. 
Uh, what says last victim standing is a black trans dwarf, but can't cast a dwarf, so that victim gets replaced by a Nazi. <laughs> but I'm sure, okay. Um, Andrew says, I'll never forgive that we won't get World War Hulk. Probably not, no. We've got Professor Hulk, though. He's cool, right? Um, Isaac Adams says, I would love if you could get Brandon Sanderson on. Isn't he like a best-selling author and he's like super famous? I don't well, know if I can why not? <laughs> yeah. Let's just get Joe Rogan on here. Like, All right, yeah. Bring I'll him, him up. Blue Fire says, Shad, I recently finished your first book. I thought the world you created was really interesting. Any plans for a sequel set in the same universe? So I can't answer for Shad. I don't know if he's mentioned to you that he's working on book two or anything. No, I don't know anything about it, but simultaneously I wouldn't want to speculate because it's up to him to you know announce that sort of stuff. Yeah. I would hope that he would do more. Um, Callum Dimmick says... Hey, Shad, if you're interested, we have castles in America, specifically in Ohio. Some rich folks bought some German castles uh, and moved them here brick by brick across the ocean. That doesn't count. That's when, like, like that American businessman in the 70s bought London Bridge and moved it over to America because he thought it was Tower Bridge, and those are very different things. Um, and he ended up with a shit bridge across a, a, shit a lake. Bridge. It was a shit bridge. It was really ugly. <laughs> Yeah, well, you didn't, get, yeah. you didn't get the cool one that like raises and lowers by itself. Um, yeah, those don't count. You want to get you want to get proper castles that have actually been like attacked by trebuchets and things. True, you know, we've had experience of that more with with ironclads. I feel like yes. we lived through an actual war watching that movie. That was a tough one to watch. Yeah. Uh, Abdiel Garza says, to the drinker and panel, I was wondering how much it would be for you guys to look over some concepts that I have for a webtoon and a horror movie. Uh, so I don't know about the rest of the guys. I'm afraid I'm just not open to stuff like that at the moment. I don't have enough time to take take on projects like that. Um, so I apologize, but I don't want to give people false hope. I just tend to don't, I just don't want to do it in a fair way, like to review people's stuff. Yeah. Um, Chris N says drinker top five Nolan movies with five to one one being the best okay it's just for me I guess mm. uh, so number one um, probably the prestige number two memento um, number three might go for the dark knight number four uh Hmm. Dunkirk, maybe. Yeah, I'll go for Dunkirk as number four, and then five. Hmm. Might have to be Interstellar. And I say that what? grudgingly. It's okay. It's all right. Yeah, I, 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 his filmography. Putting it in number five. I might put it there. I will make a video on it in 2056, and uh, <laughs> I will change your mind on the movie forever. I'm sure. I mean, like, well, I've talked to you already about, like, Interstellar, like, fucking hate the ending. The Everything that leads up to that is more interesting, but, like, yeah, did not stick the landing there. Um, High Def 10 says, will we ever get a good Aliens or Predator, bleh, or predator film? Um, Probably not now. They, they're going to do Alien 5, aren't they? That was supposed yes. to be a movie coming out next year, and I think it's been pushed because of the strikes. I don't. So, uh, funnily enough, if I took a random gamble on a Predator film, especially after Prey, I actually have some level of like, this could be good. Alien, um, I just I don't think they have any creativity now, anyone making them beyond it's a group of people. They arrive on a planet, something weird happens, and then they all start dying one by one. And then at the end, some spooky twist happens where a robot says, actually, I want to create aliens. Mm -hmm. uh, I've just, seen too many no, times just... now. Give us just give us colonial marines versus aliens. It you could probably come up with a pretty simple premise there and and make it work. I, need I to... think that would be okay. Like and that's what Blomkamp wanted to do, wasn't it? He was going to so. do a sequel to Aliens, and it was going to have Hicks in it again. Yes, yeah. And we're never going to get that now. Uh, the real God of Rage says uh, new Marvel's trailer is out now. Live reaction. Nope. No. Uh, oh Christ, there's another trailer out. 
I, I, I feel like I'm just going to go into this movie like relatively blind. No more trailers, no more teasers. Just going to go in and experience it for the majesty that it is. Whoa. OMG Puppies says, in the 60s, um, when we were all reading Lord of the Rings, the other trilogy was Gormenghast. There's an interesting TV series with Jonathan Rees Mays, a strange story that takes place in a giant mansion. I've heard about Gormenghast, actually. I've never, never read it or anything, but people speak really highly of it. Um, Coco says, Reaper is so based, he's earned my sub. Reaper is extremely based. He doesn't take any shit. Uh, Carazola says, so is it just a coincidence that all people from Glasgow sound like they're drunk when they talk, or are the stereotypes true? I mean, it's not a stereotype. They are drunk. They don't just sound drunk. That's how, that's how it is there. Whoa. Uh, John Thomas says, Drinker, a friend posted that she went with a friend and grandkid to see Strays. Needless to say, they walked out. I recommend you and Chris Gore. I, yeah, the trailer just made it seem really crass and crude. It's like, okay, how many times can you say the word fuck in a trailer? You found a way, I guess. To yeah. Back uh, in. Doesn't seem like a great one. Normie76 says, I heard they're making a Harry Potter series. Do you think it will be good? No. Depends who's writing it. I just, I don't think it will be. I think it's getting made in current day. I think it's going to pander to a lot of people with a lot of stupid stuff. And uh, a lot of the characters are going to be swapped, if you know what I mean. And it's probably not going to be for the good. Um, so, yeah, I, I, from what I understand, the movies did a pretty good job of covering the books. I just don't really know what they expect to add to it by doing a TV show. Um Leonardo says, Drinker, do you like bourbon? And if so, have you tried Pappy Van Winkle? I've never tried that. I'm afraid I've never even heard of that bourbon. But yeah, generally mm -hmm. I like it. I quite often mix it with stuff, but I like me a good bourbon. Uh, bourbon. Bourbon. <laughs> bourbon. A bourbon is a fucking backpack that you wear. <laughs> um, Michael Batty says, Drinker and Mauler, you molding mad lads. Uh, jam a man of fortune. J must seek my fortune. Uh, Henry Avery's 1994. <laughs> so, I don't know if you're aware of the original quote, but it's I am a man of fortune and I must seek my fortune. Henry Avery, 19, uh, 1694, I believe. Uh, <laughs> okay. XQC read that on the stream and because of the font, he said, jam a man of fortune and J <laughs> must seek my fortune. And then he said it was 1996. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, plus the internet, yeah, and a meme was born. Was. Brown Vegan says, "Funny short story. At a Zoom call, a couple of clients mentioned different channels, not TV or Netflix, YouTube channels: Drinker, Nerdrotic, and Y Files." Okay, well, I'm glad they did. Um, the Tech Crisis says, "Yep, your audience is made up of plebs. Plebs with good taste. I think that's a good way of summing it up. Plebs with good taste. I like that." Good old plebs. Yeah. Jacob, Jacob Colusi says, One thing I think current Hollywood people are really missing is how magical movies used to be. Remember the twin sons in Star Wars when we first saw the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park and when the toys came to life in Toy Story? What magic is there now? That's very true, actually. Like awe and magic and wonder. Just, movies don't yeah, look that very much now. There's still ways to do it, I swear. It's not an impossibility. Yeah. Um, Ozzy ODST says you should try to get Henry Cavill. Dude's wholesome. I mean, could you yeah, imagine right. if we got Henry Cavill on open bar? Incredible. Uh, yeah, I think I would throw up with delight. Um, but yeah, I think he's a bit busy right now. Um, Tevin Daniels says, hello, Shad. I read your book and it inspired me to start writing my own novella. My first draft is almost done. Well, congratulations, man. And I hope it does well. Um, Photon Theta says, Red Dark Harvest. Loved it. Broke my heart several times along the way, then healed it in the end. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Uh, Rob Robinson says, The midget at the end of Lord of the Rings with the big, pump the big pumpkin did don't like him. <laughs> like the big, big midget with a pumpkin. Okay. <laughs> Ruined the whole movie. Hmm. Uh, 
Jordan McCool says, evening gents and drinker. <laughs> Am I different from the rest of them? Uh, can copying be used in writing usefully? If writing a story near identical to another's with subtle changes, is that considered bad writing? Episode 7 is an example of poor copying. More are still waiting. So, so we just talking about like inspiration or? I don't know. I mean, knowingly copying what someone else has done seems a bit of a shitty way to do your writing. Like, I, I can totally get like how two people who aren't really connected could end up writing something very similar. Like, it's just, you know, the, the sheer number of ideas floating around, it's going to happen. Um, but yeah, like, if you're not really adding anything interesting to it and you're just recycling what someone else has done, that seems like a really shit way of writing a story. Unless the thing about it is, here. like, you know, if I wrote out everything that, let's say, Drinker wrote out in one of his books, and then I replaced all the names and all the locations, and then I replaced, like, say, for example, character goes here because they're angry. I go, they go there because they're sad. And then you like, he attacks him with a knife. I'm like, attacks him with a club mm. and change everything, and then change everything again, and then again, and then again, until there's going to be a point where it is like unrecognizable in terms of a copycat of his work. Um, People tend to argue that that is currently what we do. Uh, every idea you ever have is going to be because you saw it somewhere else or you're inspired by something or you've combined two things um, to make something. Like if I said, I'd love to have, like, imagine a spaceship that's filled with um, businessmen on their way to, like, a particular planet to have a business meeting. They crash land on a planet and there's this alien d creature that's meant to be a weapon designed by other aliens that are actually the the people who made humans in the first place, they make all kinds of speed. You'd be like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> been something here. You can't just and I'm like, no, no, it's different because okay, wait a minute. <laughs> like I, I guess my you don't even realize. I mean, yeah, I I could see how maybe somehow it might happen like without you knowing, but like, yeah. Um if you if you're setting out to write a story and you don't have, if you don't even have ideas of your own to form a basis of your story, like I just question why you were even doing it in the first place. Yeah, I think like, there is. Why are you J.J. Abrams essentially? There are some things that we're all just like. If I said to drink like premise for my story, okay, so shapeshifters come to Earth. He's not going to immediately go, "What the? That's been done." Like, no, yeah, I, <laughs> he just like, so that's the beginning of it. Yeah, yeah I mean, okay. in the broadest terms, you know. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that I saw, you know, you talk about the characters or whatever else. And if I described the one point, one of the characters who's like a tracker among the the, the people who it, this thing is chasing faces off against it one by one, uh, one on one, but I'm going to cut away and not show the actual fight, just hear him scream. And then drink if I go like, so like Billy, I'd be like, yeah. oh shit. Yeah, that is like Billy. Huh. Okay. <laughs> like it, it, that can happen, but then you can also just be the kind of person that's like, I want to just copy this thing that's really good, and hopefully people will think my thing is good. Well, here, here's a here's a thought experiment for you, right? Um, the the number of like just new products, um, whether it's movies, TV shows, like um, books, self published comics, whatever it might be, uh, it, it kind of is increasing exponentially year on year. And will there come a point where we've just we've told every story that can be told? Hmm. Probably like, not, right? Because new new concepts keep coming up with with technology advancing. I mean, do they though? Like, and like, are we are we sort of is our creativity like keeping pace with like all this, the the new things that are coming up? I just ask because you know we, there's going to be more and more like iconic movies. I guess like the out of all the trash that's produced, some stuff will rise to the top to eventually like just cement its place in our cultural legacy, and people re will remember it. Like if you say like oh okay like tell me a story about like a, a globe trotting archaeologist who's got to recover some ancient relic that, that someone in the present day wants to use as a weapon it's like well okay that's that's raiders of the lost ark you know that's that's like a a fairly iconic definitive story for that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and it's like eventually will there have been so many of these stories told and so many movies made so many tv shows that it's like we've essentially exhausted our well of, of creativity in terms of human experiences that we can come up with. I mean, I hope that doesn't come to pass, but I just wondered if that's something you think could happen. I'd imagine one thing that would have to be said is that uh, we are in a position where 
a lot of stories do kind of get copied slash repeated. Um, someone could draw a lot of connection between Logan and Unforgiven. You'd be like, what? How? And it's like, well, fun enough, they both are deconstructions. They both begin with, like, I think uh, William Money's falling in pig shit. Wolverine is getting his car stolen. And he gets shot, I think, a couple times. Yeah. Um, and, you know, by the end of the film, they both re-understood their role in... Uh, in this world and, and just a lot of things like that. And someone could be like, well, what are you saying then? It's like, well, it's kind of like the same story got told, but with a different skin, which I think is awesome as well, by the way. But like, it's, you know, that's kind of remixes are kind of always what we do, which is fine. I think too, it's, you know, you were saying like, is there any, are we going to run out of stories to tell? There are going to be people you could tell like a child friendly version of unforgiven. What does that look like? It's kind of like Puss in Boots, the last wish. And, uh, yeah. you know, well, I mean, those three are all great, right? I mean, even just to, to cite the example that I gave you, like I gave you the example of Indiana Jones, um, but that even was a rehash of the adventure serials that George Lucas saw in the 1950s, yeah. I guess, when he was growing up. So like, that's even like a copy of something else. And so, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know how long our cultural memory goes on for. Like, will things like Star Wars eventually just be forgotten? Uh, and someone else will come up with a new concept that's really similar, but it's just like, well, the general public no longer even remembers things like A New Hope. And so you can just rehash something very similar and they won't know what you're doing. I don't know, man. It's just it's an interesting one to ponder, I suppose. Hard to say. And I hope that we have yeah, just loads more amazing stories to come. I, I hope. We all do. <laughs> Uh, Three Tommy says, "What's your recommendation for foreign movies? Like uh, favorites, or just recommending in general? I guess like ones that we, ones that you've enjoyed that you think that people would appreciate if they saw them." Hmm. Well, I think the last time we were doing uh, catch up, we mentioned Train to Busan is probably yep. going to be close to my favorite foreign film. Um, I still need to watch it, funnily enough, but like I have good things to say about The Ring being the American remake, and I keep needing to see the original. I'm going to get to it at some point, but that would become an easy recommendation, I imagine, if it's even better than the the one I like. Um, yeah. uh, old Boy, I guess. Um, it's a classic. Yeah. Um, the Raid, really enjoyed from a, like a fight choreography point of view. Uh, Quite liked uh, Parasite. There's a reason why it got a... Um, yeah. An Oscar, it de it definitely went down a path I didn't expect. Yeah, that's kind of the fun of that movie. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, TGV Monster says, "So are any of you guys fans of the manga or anime Berserk?" No, um, not not, really. not because I dislike it. It's just I haven't seen it yet. But people do recommend it a lot. Um, Senor Schnitz says, Drinker, uh, you all get woke Disney wrong. It's all about the power bill. With all that woke shit, Walt is now spinning in his grave so fast they just need to put some wires and magnets on him and get free power for Walt Disney World for life. I think so, yeah. It's, Who's uh, to say they haven't already done that? I mean, possibly, yeah. Tempest Inferno says, Hey, all, uh, hey Mauler, is the game you did voice work uh, for out yet? Yeah, it's cool. Oh, unless I mentioned doing voice work recently, it was for a friend's project, but um, the voice work I've done previously was for Empires of the Undergrowth, so ant simulator that you know, survive day and night trying to collect food and then avoid like spiders and beetles as they try and kill everything. It's uh, it's quite fun. Nice. Uh, Tempest Inferno says, uh, no, sorry, I just did that one. Uh, Lane Hirschberger says, I wish I could go swing swords around with Shad. I mean, don't we all, really? I'm yeah. hoping to do that after a few beers in London. <laughs> um, I'm sure it'll end well. Uh, Felix says, the animated series was better put together and the voice acting was better than the live action. What shit pile. Um, I think that's... Wait, is that Batman we're talking about here? Possibly. Not sure. Uh Alexander Dukas says, Jedi Massacre activated force latents to balance. I'm not sure if that's true, but sure. Okay. Hmm. And Felix says, they hybridized Star Trek and Star Wars. Guess it was because of J.J. Abrams. Kind of what it feels like, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's uh, it's weird that like he was hailed as the guy who resurrected Star Trek because God damn, he turned it into a joke. But oh well, he fails upwards, I suppose. Yeah, it's even a while though. Yeah, I don't think Rise of Skywalker did too many favors for him. <laughs> no. Uh, but hey, that's the end of our super chat catch up. Well, that's the last one. So I want to thank you guys for sending us so many awesome questions. Appreciate it and. Um, the next time you see us, we'll be doing Open Bar 64 on Thursday. Uh, that's going to be a, a tight one for me because I'm on my way back from London from doing the, the FNT meetup mm. that day. So I should be back in time to do uh, to do Open Bar. I'll do my best anyway. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. And uh, I guess that's all we've got for today. So go away now. Bye.